Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a video about uh, a potential pattern change. And really not even potential at this point, it's going to happen. And there's been a few changes to the pattern change. And we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about the temperatures, the precipitation, and what's to come in the in the long range, the short range, the medium range, all of that stuff. So uh, consider subscribing, guys, if you'd like to join the weather channel. Um, we do all sorts of uh, stuff about the weather. I'm a weather enthusiast, a hobbyist, not a meteorologist. And um, if you like the weather or you just want to know a bit more about your forecasts, um, have some fun, consider subscribing. Consider liking the video if you are a returning viewer, and let's get right into this. So right now we are looking at the GFS model, and I'm, I took a look at the precipitation, because I wanted to start about the precipitation first. Okay. Uh, the precipitation, it doesn't look too awfully good for a good portion of the country. It looks as if it's going to main, uh, maintain itself, uh, it's going to, I guess, earn the title of dry. That's basically what it's gonna, uh, what's going to happen. The only area where it may be a bit wetter is the state of Minnesota western wisconsin and the southeast and that's about it anywhere else it looks pretty pretty dry the northeast may be a bit wetter but again it depends on which model you look at the european has it a bit drier than the gfs and the gfs has a bit wetter obviously the west remains pretty dry but again quite a bit of precipitation across the southeast and that's mainly to do with some pop-up thunderstorms uh, and those, you know, th those could be dangerous in terms of the amount of rain they produce because of the fact that uh, they could, uh, honestly, they could just move forward or move backwards to the same spot where they were because they're just directed by usually very small movements in atmosphere. And sometimes they just stay in one place, and they could be uh, absolutely pouring rain. Um, they could, they could, they could just uh, lead to downpours, and that's the biggest threat: flooding for sure. And many days of that could lead to some uh, concern. But notice the storm we were talking about yesterday in yesterday's video is still off to Canada and that will really be the uh, a big player in this pattern change potential. So notice it has a cold front, drags it far down to the south. We get a new storm developing off that cold front. Very strong indications of a of a uh, large cluster of thunderstorms, if not several large clusters. And that moves on into the Midwest. You can see it kind of combines this cold front with this storm. And uh, this storm that has been sitting in the southeast now for many, many days uh, is finally going to get lifted up to the north. And with that, it makes room for a high pressure. Uh, to come in and absolutely uh, take control of things, if you will. It will bring much cooler temperatures into much of the north central United States. And uh, this really begins the start of next week, but the effects will definitely be felt already by the end of this upcoming weekend. As um, Monday, uh, really late Sunday, could be starting across much of the northern United States. And uh, at first, we'll see temperatures that go down to normal, so that's already going to be a nice change. And then we're going to start seeing temperatures that go below average, which is going to be awesome, as it's been hot, and we're finally going to get into some below average temperatures. You can see that for a while, we stay dry, and that's what's really going to lead to the uh, the below average precip. As drier air, cool or cooler air usually has less precipitation, less moisture. But as soon as this kind of breaks, you can see this high pressure really gets stretched then we start seeing more uh, storms, potential more storms getting close to the United States, and this is just one model run. This could get further into the United States or drag a cold front down into the United States, which it does here. And um, after that, the newest data is now showing. We could see another Arctic shot, if you will. I mean, this one could be pretty powerful. This one could be bringing lower 40s into into parts of the northern United States. So that's definitely Arctic shot, if you will. And uh, the GFS doesn't show it too awfully strong, but it does show a lot of precipitation starting to get its act together especially across the west in a long range so that is definitely good as um the west has been just uh, uh just just ridiculously dry in other words you know lack of words um if you were to look and out at the temperatures i just showed you the precipitation a bit a bit a brief rundown if you will let's say get a two meter temperature anomalies as this will be much more visible so right now we're seeing a bit cooler temperatures across the midwest there's this little dome of cooler air that built after the derecho the storm passed through brought much nicer temperatures across the heart of the midwest but um this really gets smothered by the heat you could see that by the um the GFS kind of overhypes this cool air, if you will. But um, this week, 
will be rather warm and this weekend will also be pretty steamy you can see the gfs tries bringing in a few waves of cooler air but really the main wave is up here to the north and this only begins again by late next weekend uh, by late this weekend into ne uh, early next week and you can see some of these anomalies will be pretty nice um we'll be looking at uh uh, the GFS is a bit more biased with this, or biased, it's a bit more aggressive, I should say. Uh, 5 to 10 degrees below average in terms of Celsius, up to 20 to 30 degrees below in Fahrenheit. Um, the European does not agree with that. It thinks it's going to be a much, uh, much gentler cool down, which would be nice, especially since the European's uh, second shot is, is pretty drastic and more drastic than a GFS's second shot. So you can see there's a little bit of difference here, but... Continuing this forward, you can see much of next week really is going to be cooler across even the south, the north, the central United States, and even extending as far as the east coast, though they do get um, a bit of the warm conditions. And again, um, I think I've said this before, the west is going to be uh, the warm factor here, or the warm part of the United States. They're going to stay warm. The northwest will get a couple of cool days, and they are actually right now, but unfortunately, as this cooler air moves into the midwest and the upper plains, uh, it's going to move away from the northwest, but the southwest just stays hot, and that's going to be unfortunate. But you can see that the GFS, um, the, by the way... This is new data. The GFS yesterday was just showing this first cooldown and then a warm up. Now it's showing a second cooldown, and what's making me believe this a little bit more than usual at this distance is that the European almost agrees with this head on at the same exact time frame. You can see this show a second cooldown. GFS's second cooldown is much weaker than a European's first cooldown. Uh, than the European's second cooldown. They're kind of opposites, and um, you can see that we see, again, cooler temperatures across the Midwest and into the eastern United States, though, again, it does look to get smothered by some heat later on. However, let's take a look at the European. The European definitely provides us with a bit more um, contradicting information, if you will. Um, it, it definitely provides us with a bit more thought, so let's take a look at this. Again, right now, it shows a bit of that cooler air, but generally, um, more more warm air across the Midwest. And really, that cooler air only moves into the United States after that big storm passes, and it leaves a cold front behind, and it kind of gives us that nice shot of cooler air. And if you were to look, late Sunday... We start seeing the cool effects across the Midwest, but it really doesn't take hold until Monday and Tuesday. You can see we get that cool blast of air. We can see nice temperatures, um, you know, it's upper 70s, lower 80s, which is still relatively nice. Um, as far north as the Arrowhead, we could be looking at the upper 60s, even in the mid 60s. So definitely some nice temperatures. We look forward and this air slowly starts getting smothered by the heat, kind of starts mixing in. But now, not before a second cooler air mass comes through and you can see this one is pretty powerful um much cooler than the first one according to the european and uh, 20 to uh, 15 degrees below average which would uh, possibly bring some areas close to um some upper 30s across the northern united states again this is very early preliminary but um i want to show you the european on tropical tidbits and you can see that it does a kind of a more clear job of this here's a first um cool down and here's the second one you can see the colors are more vibrant and it definitely looks as if it's making its way into the united states um so uh, definitely something you'll have to watch for as uh, this is relatively some new data that's just been coming in and but definitely we're, we're looking at this first cooler wave to occur a drier temp or drier weather or cooler temperatures and it's just really the second wave whether or not it will occur the six to ten day outlook you can see is uh, from the 18th through the 22nd, so this is the first cooldown. You can see they're showing below average conditions across much of the United States, uh, the eastern United States, I should add. Um, the west, though, you can see equally as warm. I mean, it's just a juxtap it just just a juxtaposes each other. The west very warm, the cool very east, and um, sometimes we get this bear clinic zone where storms kind of like to ride across these areas. So we'll have to see how that develops. Let's take a look at the 8 to 14 day outlook. This is kind of that time frame of the second cooldown. And you can see that they are still showing a mention of below average temperatures, really centered more towards the south and the north. But um, there's a lot of unconfidence about this. There's a lot of things that could change. So uh, th I would say this is very reasonable. But I forgot to show you the 6 to 10 day below uh, uh, precip outlook. The 8 to 14 one, you can see below average, 
just really the southeast is above and parts of the northwest. And the uh, 6 to 10 day outlook is much of the same, way below average, much drier, but um, above average across the southeast. Now you may be looking at this and being like, oh, how about that large storm that you're talking about? That will be occurring prior to this event. So we definitely, um, you know, this is the 6 to 10 day outlook, but the storm that I'm talking about will be occurring from, the, I guess, the 0 or today to 6 days. And they don't show that. So uh, let's take a look. I wanted to show you at the European, but in terms of this precipitation map. So see what storms it's showing as I already showed you what the GFS is looking at. So we're looking at the European, we see these storm clusters developing across the United States with this ongoing system that we're talking about. And uh, this one's going to be out by the end of the weekend, really. But it's also, I want to mention uh, the system in the southeast. This one's also uh, wreaking some havoc. You can see some scattered heavy showers of rain and uh Definitely some of them are going to be severe warned as we've seen in the past days, but you can see look Saturday We get this nice cold front coming across and this definitely looks pretty well developed So definitely a, a case of severe thunderstorms possible um, And then you can see the storm passes through and it opens up the air um, The area for this high pressure to come in and just absolutely uh, Drop you know the temperatures into pleasant territories and while this high pressure is here You can see not much action. We see several larger storms to the north but really, they're stretched thin and they don't impact much in the United States. And um, they're kind of um, the in-between, I guess, of the of the two cool-downs, the storms. And you can see another one comes down here. And again, this one looks uh, much cooler, the, this last one, and then the first one. And I wanted to show you some of the actual temperatures, the temperatures that uh, would be reading on a thermometer. You can see the first cool-down brings some nice temperatures during the night, 60s, 50s, even some lower 50s. The second one brings some uh, downright almost cold conditions. You can see uh, upper 40s, lower 40s across some of these locations. Uh, Southern Canada seeing, uh, you know, upper 30s in some locations. So definitely something interesting to point out. But we'll have to keep this monitored, keep an eye on for this. And uh, again, these usually don't tend to be unpleasant at this time of the year. They tend to be more of a pleasant thing. So this should be looked as of a good thing. But again, we still have that first storm, that larger storm to get through uh, up until this weekend, which I'll make a video about uh, probably uh, tomorrow or maybe even later today. We'll see. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you uh, so much for uh, watching to the end. And if you are watching and uh, if you guys would like to subscribe and like the video, that'd be awesome. But I'll see you guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.